And this is me, my mother, and my brother. Here, this one. Oh. These two. That oh, time, there was only one medical college that was in Colombo. And while we were there, they opened Peradenia. It had just started, so we did our internship there. Wow. <coughs> that time, it's very hard to get into a medical school, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's very like uh, if you roughly a thousand set there, hundred and fifty got it. Very right through. Uh, university qualified medical in uh, you know uh, in Sri Lanka, and at that time the qualification was fully recognized in England. Then we came to UK in 1969. Then after that, you, you started working here. Uh, UK 69, one day, all over, all over UK. We were in uh, Derby, Nottingham, London, South London. We were the longest in Derby. Derby, Nottingham. Whole thing has changed. Not like before. Before was more homely, friendly, more human. Right. Now, that's all forgotten. It's all about. When you call a family practitioner, what they call general practice now, was a real family practitioner. You know, you are friends with people. Now people become just elements to treat, that's all. Not like before in a GPs like you. We behave like human beings then, but now it's that's going off quite gradually it's going off. Becoming a bit artificial. It's just a profession. <laughs> there is no feeling, yeah, from, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's no passion. No. So what about Sri Lankans, you think? Like Sri Lankan like Sri Lankan. migrants as doctors who came here after Sri Lankans as doctors? Yeah. To in UK. I can only speak for my batch that came in. They were all they are okay. But what about the current batch? Current batch where they unfortunately for Sri Lanka so many medical colleges opened up. Instead of being one, when we were there only one. But now every town has got a medical college. Standard is down. The, the, the doctor-patient relationship is completely gone. They have lost, uh, lost their identity. Money came at like the end of the month or uh, whatever it is. But we didn't work for money, but now they seem to be working for money. No. Sri Lanka is good for a holiday. But you prefer to stay here. You've been living here more than half of your life, isn't it? Huh? You've been living here more than half of your life, isn't it? More than half of years. So you prefer to stay here? There are no preference. As we get but you like you, you you like it here. As we get older, Sri Lanka, if there's our family and people are there, it's better. We like to move closer, family and people and friends now than before we were working. Now there must be some sort of a support. Tell me about Sri Lankan politics, Uncle, like from when you started. You don't get involved. My brother gets involved, but I'm not into it. But I, I follow. I follow up, like I look at news and all these things. Sri Lanka in a bit of a mess now, isn't it, at the moment. For me, it was a damn joke, actually. You mean that I like it? In fact, uh, In uh, 
in, in the early 70s, we went for, you know, Calcutta. From Batiklo to Calcutta, we went fully on our motorbike. Coming back, we were stopped by a big gang of Tamils thinking that we were Sinhalese. They walked up to us. Before they could do anything, I, I told him my colloquial Batiklo Tamil. <laughs> so they pardoned and went. So I was thinking, suppose I was the Singhanese. The company of two of us. So I confronted, in fact, uh, one of the trips I, uh, to Medical College, I went for a holiday to Batiklo and coming back. Uh, my father managed to put our car behind the police escort. Uh, uh, police escort was coming. The judge was uh, after his sessions in Patiklo. He was going to Colombo. He had a police escort with several vans. I managed to follow that and get back to Colombo. And on the way, you can see paddy fields burnt. They sent bodies in and burnt the fields. You see. A lot of atrocities. Uh, unnecessary, you know, all that, you know, Tamil degree. 